Today I'll be teaching the game 1846, The Race for the Midwest. This is a game that was designed by Tom Lehman. It originally was published by a company called Deep Thought Games, but recently it was reissued in a new edition by GMT Games, and that's the version that I'm going to be using today. At this time, that represents the start of this game, the Midwest had just opened up and uh, farmers were starting to become productive there. If you look at the game board here, uh, you will see that it's centered on the states of Ohio, Indiana, and Illinois, with pieces of Canada and some other of the United States uh, surrounding it. And one of the motives of the game involves the East Coast railroads uh, seeking to build their tracks uh, into the Midwest uh, to bring farm products uh, from the Midwest back to the Eastern markets. So you will find as you play this game, uh, that theme played out as the companies compete with each other, which adds a little bit of historical context. In this game, uh, companies um, are bought by players, and then the players uh, operate those companies uh, to make profits. The winner of the game will be the player who is the wealthiest at the end of the game, and you will become wealthy by purchasing and running companies effectively. So if you look here, you will see the basic timing of the game. Uh, the game involves uh, one stock round followed by two operating rounds. In the stock round, the players buy and sell ownership of companies. And in the operating rounds, the companies operate. They buy trains, they lay track, they place stations, they earn revenue, they may pay that revenue out to the players that own them or they may retain them to invest in more companies, more track, more trains, and, and so forth. So this is the general sequence of play. I'm going to talk about how you set up the game and how you start the game uh, toward the end of this, because first I want to teach you the basic concepts. Once you know those basic concepts, it'll be a lot easier to understand the setup. So the game, as I said, starts with a stock round in which players buy and sell shares. In the stock round, uh, you first may sell any number of shares that you already own, subject to the rules, and then you might buy uh, one stock certificate. At the beginning of the game, of course, you own no shares, so I'm going to start by describing how you buy shares. But in a stock round, first you sell, and then you buy. The players are going to be seated around the table and we will play in clockwise order. And so during the stock round, each player will have turns to buy and or sell shares. And so you may have opportunity to buy multiple shares or sell at different times as it goes around the table. So when you buy stock, you may do one of three different things. Uh, one thing that you may do is you may take a railroad corporation that has not yet um, been floated and you may float it. That means you're starting it into operation. So there's the Illinois Central Company. And when you float a railroad, you choose the charter. This is the place that you put the assets of the corporation on. And the corporation will come with a number of these tokens marked with the company's colored token marker. The first thing you will do is you're going to ch choose a price at which you're going to start the railroad. Up here is the stock market value track describing how much the shares of the railroad are worth. And uh, there's a marker, a token here to represent. This goldenrod colored box here represents the prices at which you can start a railroad. So you could say, I want to start this railroad at a price of $80 a share. You'd put the token there. In order to buy the railroad, the company starts with 10 shares in treasury, but there are only nine stock certificates here. There are eight of them that are worth 10% of the company each, but there's one special one called the president's certificate that's worth 20% of the company. So there are nine of these certificates. In order to float the company, you will take the president's certificate, and because the stock price is $80 a share, and this president certificate represents two shares, you're going to pay $160 from the company, from your, your money into the company treasury. Each player is going to start the game with $400, and that will be money that you can either invest in buying shares in companies, or you can invest it in buying private companies, which I'm going to describe toward the end of this. 
So that's called floating a railroad. You buy the president's share, you set the price, and you pay the money for that president's share into the treasury. The company is going to then use that money uh, to buy trains, to lay stations, to lay track, and therefore to be able to make a profit. You take the number of station markers corresponding to the number of circles here, and there's always a starting location for the Illinois Central Railroad. The starting location is in Cairo or Cairo, Illinois, depending on where you're from, and you mark it there. I did mention for historical flavor that this is a lot about the East Coast Railroads going west. The state of Illinois felt that perhaps they would like to have a little bit more influence in this process, and so the state of Illinois capitalized a company the Illinois Central to serve uh, the state of Illinois, and that's what this company is, not an East Coast Railroad. You will also take a token and you will place it up here. This is a track on which you record how much the company is earning. Uh, this is useful for players to see how the companies are doing and therefore how their companies are doing compared to their uh, competitors' companies. Uh, and also uh, to remember if I paid this much income previously, um, how much has it gone up or down so they can see how they were progressing. The second thing that you can do if your turn comes around in the stock round is you can buy a share of the railroad that's already been floated from Treasury. So if I start the Illinois Central, either I or anyone else could buy one of these normal Illinois Central certificates worth 10% each, one share, and the price is $80. The price marked by the corporation's stock price token is always the price at which the players either buy shares or, we'll describe this a little bit later, at which they sell shares. So I could, when it comes to my turn, buy another share of the Illinois Central, putting another $80 into the treasury, or one of my competitors could buy a share of the Illinois Central and put it in front of him or her and pay that money into the treasury. One of the features of this game is that the corporations are not 100% owned by the president. Uh, all the players have the opportunity to buy stock in the same corporation, thereby in some way becoming uh, partners in the, uh, the success of that corporation. So that's uh, the second thing you can do in your turn. The third thing you can do in your turn uh, depends on the fact that players can sometimes sell shares, they can sell shares, and when players sell shares, those shares get placed in the stock market. If there are shares in the stock market, um, a player can buy a share from the stock market. They pay $80, but because they're not buying the shares from the corporation, but instead from the stock market, instead of putting money into the corporation, they take the share and they pay the bank the money to represent the fact that they're in some sense buying the company from the bank. Now there are a couple of rules um, about buying uh, shares. The first is that no one may own more than 60% of a corporation. So notice that I have, in my example, already bought 30% of the company. If I already own 60% of the company, that would be a hard limit. I could not purchase more stock in the same company if I already own 60%. Another player can do so, but not me. The second uh, restriction is that there is a certificate limit. Each player may only own a certain number of certificates. This is a little chart that shows that depending on the number of players in the game. In a three-player game, each player may only own 14 certificates. Certificates are these little pieces of cardstock, and so I could own at most 14 of these in a three-player game, at most 12 in a four-player game, or at most 11 in a five-player game. I will mention that uh, sometimes companies close, and if a company closes, this number goes down. You can look that up in the rule book. I'm not going to give you the numbers because that's a fairly rare thing that happens, although it does happen sometime. And the third rule is, remember that we have a stock round followed by two operating rounds. If I have previously sold shares in a company in the stock round that we are in, I can then not buy those shares back. And you can imagine that if I could sell a share and get paid 80, and then I could buy a share back and pay 80, um, this could go on and on forever and it would never stop. So once I've sold a share to the stock market, I'm prohibited from buying stock in that same company, whether from the treasury or from the stock market, until 
We've had two operating rounds and it's time for another stock round. If the president sells shares in a company, one or more shares, in his or her turn, the price of the company goes down one box on the stock market value chart. Uh, when the president sells, it indicates perhaps a lack of confidence in the company, and so the price goes down. But if any other player sells shares in the company, uh, the stock price stays the same. So those are the three things that you can do to buy stock. Uh, selling stock is easier. Uh, to sell stock, you simply take one or more uh, certificates that you have and you place them in the stock market and you get paid by the bank the stock price uh, for each share. So um, that's how you sell and that's how shares get in the stock market which, um, uh, which you, um, you, you could buy later if, if, uh, if you're qualified to do so. When the um, president is the player who owns the most shares in the stock market, so if I start the Illinois Central and I have three shares, uh, then I'm the president. But let's say my neighbor or one of the other players starts buying up shares in the Illinois Central. Well, it buys a second and a third, and I have three. And if that player buys so that they have more stock than I have, uh, they become the president. When they become the president, what happens is um, I trade one of them. I trade my president's certificate for two of their regular shares. It's worth the same amount, but now they become the president. Ordinarily, a player places their certificates and the, the charter of a corporation of which they are the president in front of them. And so I would have had the Illinois Central Charter in front of me. When the player becomes president, then I have to give it to that player and they become the president. Um, being the president has many advantages. You get to decide what the company does, but it does have some disadvantages I will explain later. So you have to think about being the president and whether you want to be that or not. Okay, there are a few restrictions on selling shares. The first rule is that there may not be more than 50% of the company in the stock market after you sell. So imagine that there were already 30% of the company in the stock market and I own 30%, I could not sell my 30%. That would result in 60% of the company being in the stock market. I could, however, sell 20% to reach the limit of 50%. The second rule is that you may not sell stock in a company in the stock round in which the company was launched unless you're the president. So I gave the example of me being the president and another player buying shares in the company that I just launched. Um, that player cannot sell shares in the company. Of course, in this example, if they've become the president, then they are allowed to sell shares in the company. And the third rule is that there must always be a president of a company. So if you're the president, you're not allowed to sell the shares represented by the president certificate unless there is another player who owns at least two shares, and then they will become the president. If you are the president and you sell shares, let's go back to this example again. Imagine that I have three shares of the company and the president has four shares of the company. The president could sell um, some of their shares. So in this case, they could shell, sell two shares into the stock market. And now I own three shares and they own two. And then that I would become the president. I would give them two shares in exchange for the president's certificate. It's possible that the president will sell and there will be more than one player who has shares in that company. Imagine the case where uh, one player over there owns 20% of the company, another player owns 20% and I own 30% and I'm the president. Uh, I am allowed to sell all of my shares, subject to the 50% rule, let's put these back in the treasury. I'm allowed to sell all my shares as long as there's another player uh, with at least 20%. So if I sell my shares here, what I do is I look for the opponent who has the most shares in that company. In this case, they both have two. And so the person first to my left that has the maximum number of shares gets to be the president. So in this case, I would trade my president certificate for those two regular certificates, and then I would sell my shares uh, into the stock market. Again, dropping the price if I sell when I'm the president. 
If the price of a corporation ever drops to zero at any point, which they could do during this process or in other ways, uh, the company becomes removed from the game. Uh, as I mentioned, this is fairly rare. Uh, if that happens, the company disappears, it never comes back, all the stock goes away and is worthless, all the tokens go away, all the trains go away, you put them back in the box, uh, however the money goes back to the bank because uh, money remains in circulation. So that is um, the way that uh, things go in a stock round. In a stock market, you may sell one or more shares according to the rules we've just described in, in a stock round. Uh, you may buy one certificate or you may pass if you neither wish to sell nor to buy. If you pass and other players act when it comes around to you, uh, you may act. Passing does not remove you from the action, it just means you're not doing anything uh, at one time. So I could pass on one of my turns and when it goes around the table, I could buy or sell or both on another one of my turns. However, once all four players pass in succession, the stock round is over. So I'm never guaranteed another turn in the stock round. If I pass and all of the other players pass, the stock round is over. However, if I pass and at least one other player does something other than pass, buying and or selling, then I have another turn during which I can take a buy or sell action. Finally, at the end of a stock round, we adjust prices. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a few price markers on the stock market here and I'm going to describe uh, what happens. Like this, we might have two corporations whose prices are 80 and one whose price is 70. If a corporation has stock in the stock market at the end of the stock round, that corporation's price goes down one box. So in this case, the Illinois Central price would go down from 80 to 70 if there's stock here at the end of the stock round. On the other hand, if 100% of the stock of a corporation is owned by players and is not on the treasury or the stock market, then the price of that corporation goes up by one box. If there's no stock in the stock market, but there's still stock in the treasury, then the price stays the same. This reflects the market's reaction to high demand or to low demand uh, in, in adjusting the prices. You make those adjustments in order of price. Now in normal terms, the order of play for corporations is from high price to low price. So in this case, 80 would go before 70. If there are two markers in the same box, then the one that's on the top goes first. When you place a second marker into a box, it already, always goes below the one that was there before so that the price markers in a box are always in order from top to bottom from the one that was there the longest to the one that was there the least amount of time. And so if we were going to adjust the Illinois Central price down and then we were going to adjust the New York Central's price up, then you would do this first, and then you would do this. Notice the New York Central being the new company would have to go below the Pennsylvania. Let's imagine that that didn't move up or down. This can be important because imagine that we were in this situation here where the New York Central's price was 60. The Illinois Central price is going to go down. The New York Central price is going to go up. We would adjust this price down first and then this price up, and as a result, the Illinois Central would have gotten there first and be the first one in the box. So that's the adjustments, we call them sometimes float ups and float downs at the end of a stock round. After that stock round, whether it's the first stock round or some later stock round, we go into the operating round during which the companies take turns. It's important to remember that in the stock round, the players take turns and they take turns clockwise around the table. But during an operating round, the companies take turns and they take turns in order according to their prices on the stock market uh, going from one end to the other. In an operating round, the companies operate. Now we've been talking about corporations, which are the most important types of companies in the game, but later on we're going to be describing private companies. Private companies are much simpler in general than corporations, and many of them pay an income. And uh, these companies can be owned by players or can be owned by corporations. So the first thing that happens in an operating round is that the private companies, this represents the Ohio and Indiana Railroad, pay that amount of income to their owners, whether it's the player 
or the corporation. You take the $15 out of the bank and you give it to the player or the corporation. The second thing that happens is the independent railroads run. I'm going to explain these in detail, but there are two independent railroads. One is called the Michigan Southern and one is called the Big Four. And each of them has a home station. The Michigan Southern's home station is in Detroit and the Big Four's home station is Indianapolis. And first the Michigan Southern operates and then the Big Four operates. Again, I'm not going to go into the detail of the, how that works right now. And then the third thing that happens is that the corporations that have been launched, that have their markers here on the price chart, they take their turns in operating round order. Now, except in the very first operating round of the game, after the very first stock round of the game, the companies operate in the order that I described to you, from highest price to lowest price, if you have two prices in the same box, the one on top goes before. However, in the very first operating round of the game, the corporations operate from lowest price to highest price. Uh, this is to give the less well-capitalized corporations a chance to get a good start before the bigger companies get started. It's an exception, but remember on the very first operating round, the corporations are going to operate from low price to high price. Still, if there are two in the box, the Illinois Central in this case would operate before the New York Central, but in the first operating round those two would operate before the Pennsylvania Railroad because it's ascending price order. For the rest of the game and when adjusting the prices uh, for float ups and float downs after a stock round, uh, it's always in descending uh, price order. So what does a corporation do during its operating round turn? Uh, the first thing that it may do is it may take shares that are in the stock market and buy them back into the company treasury. Or it may take shares in the company treasury and issue them to the stock market. Previously when I described the stock round with players taking turns, the players were buying shares from the treasury or buying shares from the stock market and or selling shares to the stock market. But uh, now that we're talking about an operating round, the players are not taking turns. So at the beginning of its operating round turn, each company may sell shares to the stock market or buy shares back from the stock market. That's a transaction between the corporation and the stock market. Now when the corporation issues shares or redeems shares, that's what we call it from the stock market, um, it does not pay the price that's shown on the stock market track, value track. Instead, the corporation must pay one box higher if it's buying shares back and it receives one box lower if it's selling shares. So if the Illinois Central with a price of 70 wanted to buy a share back from the stock market, it could buy one or more, it would have to pay $80 for each share to the bank to buy it back. And similarly, if the Illinois Central wanted to issue a share to the stock market, it would place the share in the stock market and it would receive only $60 for each share that it issued. Oftentimes, a corporation will issue shares to the stock market to raise a little bit more capital uh, to lay track or buy trains or do one of the things that it wants to do. If it does that, it must do it at the beginning of its turn. However, uh, if you look at the rule book, the rule book suggests that um, you give the players a little bit of a break if the corporation is operating and it realizes as it's making its decisions that it ought to have issued a share, um, we, when we play, allow the or corporation to say, okay, um, I'm going to go back to the beginning of my turn and I'm going to issue that share to the stock market because I now realize that I needed that money. Or alternatively, I'm going to buy back a share from the stock market because I realize I have the money to do so and I'd like to do that. That's the first thing that happens. This is episode 105. <laughs>